and we're back again. We're on day 26 of 30 days looking at this book, Frameworks Volume 2. Think about the nature of God. If you've been following the series, then my apologies. Uh, we haven't done so many videos over the last couple of weeks, uh, but hopefully uh, we should be back now uh, to some more regular videos. Now, uh, finishing off this volume and then diving straight into Volume 3, uh, thinking about Jesus uh, in just a few days' time. But here we are on day 26, more on the glory of God. More on the glory of God. And to help us think about this, we're asking ourselves the question, why does God create? Why did the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit think about uh, and come up with this plan of creation, uh, putting it into action? What is the purpose and reason for it all? Well, in Colossians chapter 1, we see that the Father created the world for the Son. It is a gift from the Father to the Son, given to him to enjoy, uh, to show him off, uh, for him to uh, enjoy and to have pleasure in. Uh, and uh, it might make us think, well, really? What, why? Uh, we look at creation, we look at humanity, we look at all the things that go wrong. And it's got to make us wonder, you know, isn't it all a bit of a bother? Uh, isn't it and hasn't it caused such pain and heartache in the very life of God? With all the things that have gone wrong, why has God created? Uh, Richard Sibbs, uh, hundreds of years ago, wrote uh, this, uh, which I think is just wonderful, captures a sense of why it is that God created uh, the world. God's goodness is a communicative, spreading goodness. That is peculiar to God and to those that are led with the Spirit of God, that are like Him. They have a communicative, diffusive goodness that loves to spread itself. Seek ye my face. I am good in myself, but I desire to shine on you, to impart my goodness to you. Why did God create the world? Because God's goodness and kindness and love uh, is an overflowing kind of goodness. It is communicative, it communicates, it spreads, it is diffusive. It naturally flows from that of high concentration to that of low concentration. Um, uh, this is the goodness of God. Uh, creation is a natural outworking of it because it wants to be shared to be given towards others. And, and as we thought about in day 25, you know, the glory of God is in God's love. And that love is a love which longs to be given over to others. Uh, similar to the question of why does God create is the question of why does God save? You know, why does God do it? Uh, and when we think about how the glory of God is most revealed to us and most displayed and most shown off uh, for what it truly is on the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because it is on the cross that the love of God is shared for others. Why does God save? Because it is his goodness overflowing. Uh, of course, in the very nature of who God is, he in his righteousness will reach out to those who are not righteous. And that's the part of the nature of Christianity, isn't it? It is not a, a, a moral imperative. Christianity is not about God saying to us, be good. It is God saying, I am good. Let me share that goodness with you. Let me make you good. And so it is that the righteous God, full of light and life, seeks out the sinner who is full of death and darkness and decay. So it is that the Lord God Almighty reaches out to you and to me. And this this is the glory of God, the overflowing goodness and kindness and love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, reaching out to that which is not good and making it good. And so as we wonder and marvel at uh, the nature of God's kindness to us, we are marveling at the very glory of God. And we are invited to live for that glory, do everything to the glory, for the glory, out of the glory of God, reflecting that nature, showing it off as wonderful, showing it off 
as God's overflowing goodness, kindness, mercy and love.